The following production is part of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. I say it's time we focus on what really matters. The games. Who's with me? Good morning, PlayStation Universe. Welcome to episode 41 of the PlayStation Experience podcast, The Cloud to PSVG Prime's Aerith in PSVG's premier PlayStation podcast. I've never played Final Fantasy VII, um, and so I have no clue. I think Cloud is the protagonist. He is. And Aerith is the girl? The, the love interest. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. So, um, so, so I don't know what you're implying about our relationship to Kevin and you know, PSVG Lucas. Prime. So. Lucas. We we love each other. Doesn't now I've never played the game and spoilers for an old game that's being made new again. Doesn't Aerith die? That would that is a main component of the game, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you're I see where I'm playing now. Yep. Took me a minute. Yep, yep. Took me about a good thirty seconds, but we got there. All right. Before we get um kicked off and while my cat's butt is in my face, because that's what cats do. Um, I want to thank our Patreon producers. You can find out more about PSVG on Patreon at patreon.com slash PSVG. Thank you to Coach Hulk, Edwin Callow, Devin Tyus, Kevin Austin, Chris M., Kyle Hyman, Bonesaw, Josh Borboni, Barry Cathcart, and Paul Calicote. Thank you to everybody who supports us, and thank you to those uh, to that group of um, people. So uh, this week on PSVG is our uh, E3 preview all across um, play the play some video games podcast network which kind of puts us in an awkward situation because playstation is not at e3 um and uh and oddly enough um i almost overslept us recording today so we almost didn't have an e3 episode either <laughs> so eh. we should have just not dropped one and we yeah. should have <laughs> yeah should should have just uh uploaded a uh like 30 second uh, blank audio file yeah titled playstation at e3 so um anyway uh what have you been playing on your playstation before we get into um we are going to talk about state of play uh which yes was what's pretty cool last week so before we get into that what have you been playing uh so i've still been just grinding through that's great odyssey mm-hmm. so that's really I, I have played apex a little bit here and there but mostly uh, that game's really got its hooks in me, so just continuing Odyssey, and I continue to really enjoy that game. Cool, cool. I um, also am not playing anything new. Um, generally, like I think I said last week with Apex, I'm at the point where I'm playing, if I'm playing with a friend, I'm playing it. If I'm not, I'm I'm not jumping in solo at this point. Um, I'm sure that'll, you know, once Season 2 comes out or whatever, that'll, that'll change, but... Um, I have been still playing MLB The Show, I'm still doing the March to October mode with the Indians, I'm having a lot of fun with that, and Sekiro, um, so last week I talked about, I had gotten through the, um, sorry, my cat was standing right in front of my microphone, um, I'd gotten through the uh, that Chained Ogre boss and was stuck on the next boss, and so my next goal was to get two of these, you, you add these tools to your prosthetic arm. And one of them uh, is called a firecracker, and you have to buy it from this vendor. Um, and I hadn't done that yet, so I worked up to that vendor again and bought this firecracker thing. And it uh, throws down a bunch of firecrackers on the ground, and it scares animals and things like that. Um, so I got that, and then I went and got this axe that you can attach to your arm that is pretty powerful. Um, and I found that. And so in, in, in the course of that, you know, you farm experience a little bit. So I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm ready to, I've gotten those tools and I've leveled up um, some of my abilities. And so now I'm ready to go and, and try and tackle some more mini bosses. So 
That's where I am in Sekiro. Um, I haven't, um, you know, you, we talked about keeping track of how many times I've died. I'm not sure that I've died in the last week, but I also haven't played it that much. Um, oh, okay. Just, oh, uh, I mean, you good. know, over the weekend, um, being Mother's Day and we had visitors and, you know, it's harder to play, especially a game like Sekiro. I'm not going to sit down with the mother-in-law. Uh, I think she'd really enjoy this. And, game, so. uh, no. It's about a rich Japanese culture. Yeah, exactly. I made the mistake one time. Um, have you ever played Outlast? Do you oh, remember? Do you remember? Yeah, Outlast? the scary game. Yeah, the scary yeah. game where, <laughs> where you're yeah. like a, uh, I think you're a reporter and you go into this house and then you're chased down by the scary guy. I never got that far in it, but yeah, the one time I played it was when um, the my wife's mom was around and she <laughs> watched me playing it for a little was, bit. Was not so, thrilled. No. She she actually she laughed which which was good but uh, you were you were going I, to a horror movie and and most of the crowd like at, at the theaters and most of the crowd is like laughing instead of like being scared so, so I don't go to horror movies much anymore um or ever anymore but when Saw came out I was in college and I uh, worked for the entertainment section of our newspaper and so they were doing a free screening of Saw before it came out um in kent and it was just full of college students have you ever seen that movie yeah yeah the first one yep so so i really i i like the first movie i think it's um awesome um it's creative it's 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 interesting yeah yeah yeah. but it is um funny uh the acting is not very good um i in in a lot of a lot of very over the top um but uh, so I watched that in a room full of a couple hundred college students that were making fun of it. Yeah, which that, that yeah that one gets passed. It's it's a little campy. It's a little yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I just had a recent. I don't, I don't understand people who like laugh like a genuine horror film. I don't yeah. really understand. You know, you get those people that like laugh through the scaries. I don't know. Yeah. I just find that odd. But say a defense mechanism. Yes. Um, speaking of scary things, new releases this week, Bubsy <laughs> Paws on Fire uh, is coming out. Um, actually, Castlevania, the anniversary collection, uh, releases this week. Um, Konami's releasing a number of these anniversary collections. Um, I have never played a Castlevania game. so I Yeah, same boat. I think we talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's just completely eluded me. But yeah, I know this one has... Original Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Castlevania 3, and Castlevania Super Castlevania 4. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, there's the eight games. So I'm I uh so in like horror monster kind of things, um vampires are my favorite kind of horror monster. Yeah. Um I, I like Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um Salem's Lot is a favorite. Um Blade in, in terms of books. Blade, um I think Blade's pretty cool. Blade's, Blade's pretty cool. Um, and uh, uh, the Lost Boys. Um, yes. As far classic. As go. Oh yeah. Yes. So so I'm I'm a big fan of vampires, and I, so I don't know why I've never played Castlevania. Just never have. Um, I am looking more forward to the Contra um, collection that will come out at some point. Um, just because I actually played Contra when I was younger. Yeah. Um, the big game coming out this week is Rage Two. The next first-person shooter from ID um, that looks pretty bonkers. Uh, I know yeah. a lot of people in PSVG are uh, looking forward to that one. Um, are you diving into Rage? Right, and I know you're kind of set right now, but yeah, I'm kind of set right now. But it is a big first-person shooter. That's kind of like my my favorite genre. So yep. I'm very. I, I really want to get it, but I don't think yeah. I will. Of course, you don't um, like. Um, you didn't like Doom, right? I just couldn't get into yeah. it. I don't. I don't know why. Like I, I, I heard nothing but good things about Doom. Yeah. From basically every news outlet, and I was just, I never. It didn't grab me in any way. I was just like, okay, I don't know. I don't get it. So, um, I assume this will be similar, but not quite. Um, you know, you're facing human crazy uh, enemies in this game versus scary Mars zombies or whatever. So, yeah. It looks cool. Uh, looks very. It, it's fitting that um uh, avalanche is making it because it looks kind of like mad max honestly yeah so and they made the mad max game a few years ago yeah um yeah so big um i think we're starting you know it's it's at summertime i, I mean it seems like every month 
anymore. There's at least one pretty big release. Yeah. Um, and I feel like Rage 2 is is this month's. Um, well, what Days Gone was, what, two weeks ago? Yep. Just barely? Yep. Yeah. So, like, so not even a full month, and we get another really big release. So Yeah. Speaking of Days Gone, I don't have that on here, but it is the number one selling... I don't know if it's the number one selling game in Japan. It In Japan, for a PlayStation exclusive, it beat out... God of War, Detroit, and uh, one other PlayStation exclusive. I I, I forget. Um, but um, and that's in Japan. Uh, obviously, they have different. Uh, oh, Detroit, God of War, and The Last Guardian is the best selling game in Japan in its second week of sale. Um, in that's two good. weeks, it has surpassed the lifetime sales of Detroit, God of War, and Last Guardian in Japan. Uh, oh, good. So interesting. Yeah, that, that is, is curious. That's actually kind of curious. So, yeah. well, um, yeah. yeah, I know they also had did they did uh, Mortal Kombat 11 beat them out in digital sales, okay. um, or at least what was announced. Um, but but they came, you know, they're in second best selling game of April or uh, of last month. So yeah. All right, so now we are going to cover state of play from last week. Um, before we get into st- We'll share a few E3 thoughts, but uh, obviously PlayStation's not actually at E3. So, Justin, do you want to talk? Uh, I have I have this article, and uh, they don't go in order of the show, but do you want to go in the order of the article, or do you want to talk about the big news from the end of the show first, or do you want to save that for last? Uh, let's, just, let's just get it out of the way. Yeah, the, okay. the one big item. Yeah. So, last week, Justin... We talked about what could be on State of Play, and we talked about that person's name, uh, the, the person who who is the like creative head of Final Fantasy and yes. created uh, Kingdom Hearts. And I said that means that Final Fantasy VII is back. Yes. And he said, "No way." So, um, what was your reaction when Final Fantasy VII returned? Uh, I was, uh, I'm, oh, I'm happy. I guess okay. I'm lost for words. Clearly. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, I was shocked. I still, I'm frustrated because I still feel like it's nowhere near release, and they just have some addition, a little bit of additional footage to what they had. I think three years ago now, four years uh, ago, four years ago, and but it's roughly the same footage from the same part of the game, the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, what we would, what would normally be completed in within the first couple hours, um, and it looks slightly different, slightly better, I would say. But I just don't believe this. I still don't believe that this game is coming out or it's going to have a good release <laughs> schedule. Um, they did. I, it looks great. I'm, I'm, I am excited. I will always be excited. It's my favorite game of all time. Just kind of, I'll always be excited for it. But I just don't want them to announce anything until it's just ready to come out. Yeah. Um, but with that said, it looks good. I have some, some, some concerns that they're going with completely with the Final Fantasy 15 combat. Okay. Um, which was more real time and a little bit more hack and slash. Um, yeah, honestly, were, I think you'd you'd like was, it. You would like. Uh, yeah, there were there were. Uh, I heard it was more um, maybe Final Fantasy fifteen, but more like uh, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, and it, maybe that's maybe that's all similar. Right? It, it is all know. similar, where it's real time combat. You kind of you've got your magic buttons that you can. It, it's it's like a lot of third person action games, honestly, mm-hmm. um, especially. Um, something that has, you know, a magic attachment or something like that. So, um, like I'm playing, you know, Assassin's Creed. Now you have, you hold down one of the triggers, you get abilities and use those. Final yeah. Fantasy kind of worked the same way where you had magic abilities and certain button prompts. So, but my concern there is that uh, Final Fantasy VII was, you know, a turn-based um, RPG. Right. Um, and the, the way the magic worked was like, very integral to the story as well. And it made a lot of sense. So, cause you had to like attach magic to your person. I don't know. It's crazy. And it probably sounds ridiculous, but to me who really loved the lore of final fantasy seven, I'm a little worried that they'll kind of lose all that part of the story. So we will see. They did confirm afterwards that it was still going to be episodic. Yes. Um, so I did see that. That's all. That's all I gotta say. We'll, we'll see. I, I'm not holding my breath. All right. So, um, they do say there will be more information at E3. Well, it said more information coming in June. Yeah. <laughs> um, Square 
Square Enix has, they're basically taking the time slot that PlayStation usually has, that Monday night, 9 p.m. time slot. Um, I, I mean, I think it's safe to assume um, that Final Fantasy VII should appear again there. Hopefully, I I can't imagine that they would intro- reintroduce this without having a somewhat imminent release plan. Um Especially I if just, they are doing it episodic, you yeah. see, it seems like it shouldn't be too hard to at least get one the first game out the door. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know how they're going to turn this. You know what their episodes will be. The original game came in three discs. Right. Maybe this will be three episodes, or I don't who knows. But and and also episodic doesn't necessarily mean like the telltale definition of episodic, um, where it's you know small game, you know. Every three months, we're going to get a 10-hour portion of this game. It could be we get Final Fantasy VII Remake-1 <laughs> uh, this December, and the, and it's a 50-hour-long game. Yeah. And then two years later, we get Final Fantasy VII-2, and it's a 40-hour-long game. And then yeah. two years out, you know, it could be this could be a, a really long tale of episodes that cover the the whole final fantasy seven story, but maybe add more. Yeah, Um, I could, I could, I could definitely see that. Um, and, um, you, most episodic games probably aren't as replayable as something like this. Um, I could definitely see you, even if this was a 20 hour chunk of the game, um, maybe, maybe it's, you know, going to be a hundred hour game, you know, after all the episodes come out, but even if they give you 20 hours, I could see you going back through and really, min maxing everything and that that's kind of what how rpgs are that's what we're used to like grinding and stuff and there's probably gonna be some side stories stuff like that so um i could see it being a little more replayable than something like a telltale game yeah and um and also with the combat um you know i've been thinking about trying out kingdom hearts 3 because i do think my kids um would enjoy watching that and my wife wouldn't even mind you know that much the combat being real time um, makes me at least more likely to give this a try. Yeah. Um, when I've done turn based, like even, you know, last year was, um, oh, Persona 5. Um, I really liked Persona 4. Persona 5 is a great game, um, it's very stylish, everything. But I just, it's hard for me to get too much into the turn based combat um, when I'm thinking like I could be playing. Sekiro, for for example, where you're yeah. hopping around, doing the grappling hook, um, swinging your sword, doing all that kind of stuff. So having it be a real time combat, um, I, as long as it's good, obviously, um, might make me more interested in it. Um, okay, so going back through some of the other announcements uh, from the state of play, which was it was like I don't know how long it actually was, around ten minutes, ten twelve minutes, mm-hmm. and packed a lot into it. Um, one of the exclusive first party games that was revealed was Predator Hunting Grounds, an asymmetric online multiplayer experience um, that is due on PS4 in 2020, where it looks like one person will be the Predator and four people will be teamed up to try and take that Predator down. Not unlike um, how the name of the, the game. The monster game. The yeah. monster, Evolve. Evolve. Evolve, yep. Um, which actually was an enjoyable game. Um, I, I liked it, um, but it kind of fell off a cliff yeah. pretty quickly. Um, so when when Predator was first, uh, it, it comes up and you're they're in like a jungle area and it you see one soldier and then eventually it gets up to four soldiers. What did you think we were getting? Uh, probably more just a a single player Predator game or something like that, okay. or a third person action game. I, um, Predator. I really thought because at that point. At first, the predator didn't show. He was, up. That's yes, yeah, true. He was clear. Um, yeah. I was thinking SOCOM all the way. Um, yeah, and uh, that would be, yeah, and then it the camera zooms out and you see the predator's um, oh, you know, invisible outline kind of show up. Yeah, it was camouflage. Um, and when it became clear what this game is going to be, eh, I'm not attached to the predator. And these asymmetrical games seem to not uh, have taken off, I'll say. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, I feel like uh, Friday the 13th, they're pretty good for quite a while. 
Yeah, they've got like a like a cult following on Friday yeah. the 13th. Um, I think their big problem was that they were pretty buggy in the beginning. Um, they were, for, they were, what, for a long time. They were buggy in the beginning and they like don't have the Friday the 13th license. So there's some they, weird Yeah, they can't like make any more updates or something like that. It, yeah. it, it can exist the way it is, but that's about it. So you know. So anyway, Predator, it's co- I mean, I think it's cool it's, cool. it's exclusive. I'm yeah. I'm very shocked by that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very true. early on in development. They even said that the trailer was completely CG. Mm-hmm. So you know, uh, you know, I feel like they're being. Uh, I don't know. Twenty twenty seems. Twenty twenty is not that far away. <laughs> yeah, for them to not have any gameplay footage of this game yet. Um, yeah, early, and to say that we're pretty early in development, it seems like a stretch. Um. Anyway, so I did find it surprising that they're revealing that game. Like you said, is so early in development and not coming out till next year. I, I find it surprising that they revealed it on a May State of Play event. Yeah. Um, but whatever. Uh, speaking of games coming out this year, the Medieval Remake is launching just before Halloween on October 25th. Um, it looked fine. Um, I'm not, I mean, I played Medieval back on the original PlayStation. Yeah. I'm not particularly attached to it. Um, the game, uh, maybe I'll have to see it playing on my own TV, you know, actually playing it. But like when you when you play Ratchet and Clank, the newer game, you know, it looks, it's bright, it's vibrant. It looks like a PS4 game. Yes. It's cartoony and, and whatever, but it, it looks and feels like a PS4 game. This game looks like a PS1 game. To me, it looks like a PS1 game that's been visually redone. Um, but I really just, I'll have to see it. I'll have to actually play it for myself um, to see. It just looks like kind of like a PS1 game. Like it's stuck. Yeah, uh, I see pile. what you're saying. It, does, it definitely doesn't look quite as good as like the Action Clake remake looked. I don't know if it's just because the art style or what it is or <clears throat> the budget. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I would agree with you. I mean, it's clearly made from the ground up because um, yeah. c- they just wouldn't be able to up res PS, a PS1 game oh, yeah. this much. Sure. But. It doesn't. It doesn't look like it belongs quite. So yeah. So, but it's it's coming out hopefully. And I mean, if it's got fun gameplay and and it's a nostalgia piece for people, and it's a great game to release right at Halloween. Um, but uh, I don't really feel like this showed too much new. I mean, I guess it just showed <clears throat> more gameplay, and they released the the release date. So uh, another game talked about away the survival series um takes you on a journey into the wild and this was it like during the, the stream like, it was a trip i'm like what what is this game you're you play as a little flying monkey squirrel thing and you yeah try to not die um this looks like maybe one of the most boring games i've <sighs> seen in the last 10 years for how for how like i mean it looks good yeah it, it looks like it's got a pretty good budget and but it just does not sound good or look good yeah i don't it's a survival game where you're you play this little okay set in a distant future away takes you on the adventures of the sugar glider as natural disasters threaten the survival of every species on the planet you must venture deep into the wilderness in search of safe sanctuary your journey will take you across breathtaking environments filled with dangerous creatures as you uncover the mysterious origins of your world just um oh so this isn't even earth maybe yeah i because it has mysterious origins of your world yeah uh, cause I was gonna say, I, uh, like, I don't know if they're just going for like, this is like an, uh, environmental, like outreach, uh, game. Like they're just trying to tell everyone, Hey, we're about to destroy the earth, which, you know, I guess I'm on board for, cause I would agree with that, but, yeah. uh, yeah, it sounds like it might not even necessarily be earth. So In some ways this kind of, um, there was a game re- revealed last year at some point, maybe at E3, um, where you go back and where you start off in like caveman era and you, it's like about evolution or something. Um, oh, I forget what that game. It, it's by one of the original creators of the Assassin's Creed. Yeah. It's like, evo- uh, it's, it, I feel like it's something evolve or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Th- this reminded me of that. Um, yes. Exactly. Where it's like, okay. Well this, like it's a pretty game, but it just looks boring. 
Yeah, it looks boring. Yeah. We'll see. Um, and then the first game that was revealed um, was an expansion oh, yeah. to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. comes to PS4 on September 6th. Um, and uh, actually when it was, I, I, got, I hopped on to the stream just a minute late. And so it was in the middle of this trailer. And I thought that this was going to be the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, just because, you know, it looks Japanese-y. Yes. Um, I figured out pretty quickly that it was something like Monster Hunter, if it wasn't Monster Hunter, but it was. Um, as, seen in the, as seen in the trailer, the Horfrost Horfrost Reach, H-O-A-R-F-R-O-S-T, <laughs> is the new locale featured in Iceborne. This glacial area will feature its own harsh ecosystem it's a little cold out there so you're definitely going to want to stock up on hot drinks um so it looks like it you know it's going to be cold and new monsters and more monster hunter yeah Um, which uh monster hunter world is a game that i've it looks cool i played the beta of it and just couldn't quite get into but um it looks really cool i don't have you ever played monster hunter no i never played that i'm the same boat as you it looked good i didn't play the um beta though either Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I haven't even tried it. I, it definitely like looks like something I would like, but um, I also know it. You know, if there's like an online co-op that's yep. suggested, and like I just don't do a lot of that. So I think that I think if it would if it could come out and it was like a little more focused on being completely single player, I probably would have been more interested in it. But yeah, it, yeah this, it, this, uh, this looks cool though. The ice world and yeah, yeah, making everything winter. So that's that's cool. I think um, it's a forty dollar standalone game. Or, well, I, I don't know if you have to have the original Monster Hunter World to play this, but the expansion is forty dollars, or they'll sell the whole Monster Hunter World package for sixty dollars um, in September. Okay. And I'm sure if you wait for Black Friday, you can probably get the whole package for thirty or forty dollars. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, the only other game that they revealed. Is this uh, this game called River Bond, which is like a isometric? Um, some of the visuals reminded me a little bit of like a Minecraft, yes. um, but it's it says it's voxel based, um, which I feel like voxel was a uh, big buzzword at the beginning of the PS4 generation. Yes, um, I would agree with that. But it is a four player, up to four player co op dungeon crawler. Um, I think it might even be um, procedural generation, maybe. Um, not. In, I'm not sure. I haven't really read up on sure. it. Um, um, based but, on the trailer, you know, I, I wouldn't have known for sure. It looked. I don't know. It. it I. I didn't know if it was procedural or not. Uh, watching the trailer because it looked maybe like it had more of a Zelda vibe. Mm-hmm. Um. So which wouldn't be procedural, but. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. I don't know where I got that. Uh, that into my head. It doesn't actually. Say anything about procedural, so never mind. Um, anyway, it looks looks cute. It looks, um, you know, especially if you have a few people to play with. Um, you know, this one, uh, one of the other things they revealed during State of Play was that Days of Play is coming back this summer, and it includes a new PS4 console that looks is very a little cool. bit different. Yeah, um, it's like Steel Gray or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Steel Gray. So I could see this game launching. Say, um, Days of Play is like a summer sales event where they usually release some um, indie games um, like weekly, like they might release over a four week period. They might release one game, one indie game each week. And if you buy all four, you get a discount or something. I don't know. So this, this game looks like it could be released, you know, one of those sun summer indie release kind of things. Um, Looks like it'd be fun to play with others. It has couch co-op. Um, and the characters you can be has character skins of a bunch of different other indie games. Like, um, of course, Shovel Knight jumped out at me. Yeah. Um, the guy from Guacamelee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Juan from Guacamelee. Juan. Psychonauts. Um, uh, Bastion, the boy from Bastion. Yep. There. I, saw, I noticed that one. Too. And uh, um, there are eight of them in total. And I just by looking at their pictures here, I can't. Is that Claptrap? Is that who that is? Maybe. That's not an indie game, though. No, it's not. You're right. Um, Psychonaut. Is Psychonauts an indie game? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I Fair enough. Know. I don't know where the... Not sure. 
question is. Anyway, it, this game looks like a looks like a cute game, and it's especially if you have, you know, this might be a kid friendly kind of dungeon craw- crawler game if you have some kids to play with on the couch at home. So, anyway, overall, the state of play this time was a lot better than the first one. Um, I felt, um, and even though like of that list of six games, maybe I'll play Medieval, maybe I'll play Final Fantasy, and I think River Bond looks fun, but with the the co op, um, I don't know how how much the co op is required, and if it is, then I'm not going to dive into it. Yeah, so I don't even know if I'm going to play any of these games, but they all looked good and looked like they're for somebody other than that away survival series game. Yeah, um, I don't know who that's. That's for, for nobody. Um, but all the other games they look good, and um, and I like this. You know, if this if they took these two state of plays. And I assume there might even be another one coming up in June. I don't know. Um, and just had these as their E3 presentation. Um, E3, they would have gotten blasted. I mean, it, you know, this is not an E3 blockbuster yeah. experience. Or Level, whatever. yeah. Yeah, these are, a lot of these are, sm- they're putting one big announcement with a bunch of smaller announcements. Yeah. Um, and I'm fine with that. And And the big announcement isn't even... Like this, I mean, they're showing Final Fantasy VII, which is, of course, big, but um, there was no real information out of it. So, um, yeah, if they had done something like that at E3, yeah, people would not be happy. So um, so speaking of E3, E3 is coming up. Sony is not there with their own show. Of course, there will be plenty of games and announcements from other, um, from EA, Square Enix, Ubisoft. You know, they'll all show things that are going to, be on PlayStation, um, yep. expecting Square Enix to have another look at Final Fantasy VII. Uh, EA, during their EA Play event, um, I'm hoping will outline some more about EA Access coming to PlayStation. And also, they're supposed to reveal the Apex Legends Season 2 content during oh, EA all right. Play. Yep. Um, so that'll be cool. Um, speaking of EA, this past weekend, there was a flash sale on PlayStation. And like every EA sports game was on sale. So public, public <laughs> yeah. service announcement, don't buy. If you don't yeah. have any EA games at this point, don't buy That's it. very tricky. Just wait like two months and pay 30 bucks and you'll have them all. Yeah. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in what's coming in uh, season two of Apex. And um, I don't know that there's a ton. I, I, I looked back at uh, last year's E3 for Sony. And, you know, they had the, like, four games that they showed that was kind of widely panned. Yeah. So they showed Death Stranding, Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima, and Spider-Man were the big four games. Of those, only Spider-Man is out. Yeah. The other games they showed, they they had a Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer that showed off Johnny Depp. Um, Control, that that game that still hasn't come out. Rem- yeah, the Remedy game. Yeah. Um, there's a oh a VR game Deracine Deracine from uh, from Software which has come out and then the Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 remake was on there so yeah you know when you look at last year it's easy to see why there's not any three this year yeah yeah they from, could they, they're not going to just go over the same games yeah um but I do expect a state of play uh, I don't think the same week maybe the week before or a week after yeah um. And I think it'll have at least one of those three games in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Death Stranding at this point supposedly is not that far from being done. Last of Us Part Two is obviously not shouldn't be that far from being no. done. And Ghost of Tsushima, I think that's a little bit farther out. I think that one might not show up at all. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'll really talk about that until it's close to being released. Yeah. Um, so I could I could see them announcing a release date for Death Stranding or Last of Us Part Two just to kind of. Yeah, take back some of the news cycle. Yeah. Now, do you think Medieval coming out on October 25th means that, I mean, that that's PlayStation's exclusive for the fall? No, I feel like they have to have something else besides that. Um, But I don't know. At the same time, this generation of uh, consoles is wrapping up and having the big, I don't know, maybe they just don't aren't that worried about. I don't know. They still want software sales. So, and I just don't think medieval is going to do it. So no. I, I think they need something else. I don't know if we'll get it or maybe it'll be like right before the end of the year. You know, I could see a December release yeah. of for last of us part two. And that's a game that it doesn't matter when it comes out. No, it can be big. 
Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. So, all right. With that, we're going to wrap up um, our our E3 preview show. Yeah. Um, but uh, state of play, um, it was good last week, and uh, looking forward to um, seeing how that continues to evolve over the the coming months. And and um, uh, and we're, I mean, I'm excited for for E3. I actually just realized that during E3, I'll be traveling so I, I actually won't be able to watch any of e3 live um so maybe it's just as well that sony's not uh not there so. it's perfect it was meant to be yeah exactly so and with that we're going to sign off uh you can catch us on the discord um visit psvg.blog for a link to our discord in case you aren't on that for some reason yet follow us on twitter at psxp podcast please send us your tweets messages what you've been playing any questions you have um, anything along those lines, Sekiro tips, things like that. And, uh, we hope you have a great week. Never stop gaming. I'm just letting, letting this go. Oh, all right. That's fine. Right. It, it's great. I um, mean, how long can we deal. hold this out for? For a long time. Okay. And though we may pledge fanboy allegiances to different flags, deep down inside we all serve one master, one king. And his name is Gaming. Forever may he reign! This has been a production of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network.